What's up, folks? My family is gone. Nobody's in the house. I've got the radio cranked. It's like loud. Stuff is shaking. It's Friday. I hope you're doing it right. You're doing this college thing right. We're going to get it going, folks. We're going to talk about the mole. Dude, it's like... My neighbors can't even hear me. My neighbors hate me right now. Okay, 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 okay. It's like my whole house is shaking. I love it when I got the house to myself. I just crank the music. Okay, let's get going, folks. Let's talk about some chemistry. So you can see what I have in front of me. I got this awesome little scientific calculator. I don't have to rig up a crazy little camera for this thing. I can show it to you right here. Love it. Okay, so, um, and you also can see from my first title slide, we're getting into the meat of chemistry. We're talking about moles, okay? If you've never heard of the mole, and I'm not talking about the little critter, right, that, uh, messes with your garden, I'm talking about chemistry mole, okay? So if, you, if you're not familiar with this concept, this is going to be a little weird. Uh, maybe some of you have had chemistry in high school, so you're somewhat familiar with this. Um, but if you're not familiar with this, that's okay. We're going to learn, all right? So I'm going to start this chapter three here at um, section 3.2. So you can probably tell by now most of the first opening sections in our textbook are more kind of like... Um, exciting, fun information, which I, I don't want to necessarily just skip past, but I want to get into the meat of this class. The mole. Okay, let's make this pen a little thicker. All right, so I'm going to start introducing the concept of the mole by talking about Avogadro's number. Okay, so Avogadro's number is the following. 6.02214 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules, or things, okay? And I'll put that in quote, per mole. So this, this mole, and M-O-L is the shortcut of M-O-L-E. It's not really much of an abbreviation, right? But it, we use M-O-L is fine in chemistry for mole, okay? So Avogadro's number is a number. That is what it is. It's no different than saying um, a dozen, right? When I have a dozen, I have 12 of whatever. If I have a dozen uh, buns, I've got 12 buns. If I've got a dozen eggs, I've got 12 eggs, okay? Right, it's just a number. Same with Avogadro's number. Okay, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things are one mole. So if I have one mole of things, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things. Okay, it's no different than a dozen. That's the best kind of way to think of this for now. Okay, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, okay? Well, how does this relate to chemistry? Well, as it turns out, the mass of one mole of an element is equal to its atomic mass in grams, okay? And this is all based on carbon-12, and I talked about that in the lectures um, last week. All of those masses that we have in the periodic table are actually based on carbon-12 being exactly 12 AMU atomic mass units, okay? And by definition, 12 atomic mass units per single atom is the exact same as 12 grams in this case of carbon in one mole. Okay, so if I have 6.022 
times 10 to the 23 carbon 12 atoms. And write that carbon 12, you know, sim, uh, using the symbols, I can write 12C, right? 6, right? Mass number, proton number, etc. Or I can just say carbon 12 atoms. If I have 6.022 times 10 to 23 of those things, then that means I have one mole of carbon 12. Uh, let me uh, erase her. There we go. Not carbon 11. Carbon 12, okay? And if I have one mole of carbon 12, then that means I have exactly, and we and by exactly, right, no sig figs, but just for carbon 12. Because the periodic table is based on exactly carbon 12 being exactly one mole, being 6.2 times 10 to 23, being 12 grams, exactly 12 grams. I wrote 11 again, what's wrong? with my brain 12 grams of carbon 12, okay? So this is how the whole thing starts. 6.022 times 10 to 23 carbon 12 atoms is one mole of carbon 12, which is exactly 12 grams of carbon 12 atoms, okay? So let's talk about this number for just a little bit more. This number is insane, okay? So while we're dealing with insanely large numbers, it's useful to be able to punch those numbers into our calculator, all right? So I'm gonna say 6.022, and this is a fantastic scientific calculator. Look, it has that double E button that I love so much, E23, and when I say equals, in calculator language, 6.022 E plus 23 means this, okay? So now let's suppose I had one mole pieces of paper. One mole pieces of paper. How big would that stack of paper be? Okay, and of course this depends on how thick um, the piece of paper is, right? But I want you to think about this for a minute. Pause the video and just think about it. Don't Google it, just think about it. Maybe you can even do an estimate. You know, maybe, like, get a ruler out. You could measure, like, okay, here's, like, 800 pages for my book, and it's a couple inches. So if 800 pages is a couple inches, how many would 6.022 times 10 to the 23 be? Okay. I know this answer because I calculate this because this is what I do for a living. If you had one mole pieces of paper, like textbook pieces of paper, these are pretty thin. Can you hear it? Pretty thin pieces of paper it would stack up and up and up and up. And in fact, it would go all the way to Jupiter and back 800 times, for real. Now that's of course like me estimating, you know, based on this piece of paper, but even if it went back and forth to Jupiter 795 times, it doesn't matter. It's a stupidly humongous number. It's crazy big, okay? And that number is so big because atoms are so small, okay? 12 grams is not a lot of material, all right? There's 453.6 grams in a pound, right? So 12 divided by uh, 453.6 is... 0.026 pounds. So if you had 0 0.026 pounds, I can even take this further and convert it to ounces by just saying times 16, because I know there's 16 ounces in a pound, that'd be less than one ounce. Less than one ounce of carbon is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's gigantic. It's unfathomably gigantic. Assuming I said that word correct. It didn't sound right when it came out. Uh, let's keep going, okay? So now, we're going to get into this dimensional analysis even further, right? And we're going to end up having dimensional analysis problems with multiple steps. So let's, let's take it slow for now, okay? And here you notice this thing says number of particles. You know, that could, that's the same thing as saying 
number of things, number of atoms, number of molecules, number of whatever, okay? It's just a number, just like a dozen. So now look, we start at the top, number of particles, and we go down, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles is one mole, and that gives me moles. So if I take the number of atoms I have and I divide it by Avogadro's number, that gives me number of moles. But look, if I go the other way, if I take my number of moles, okay, right? Go down first, then up. If I take my number of moles times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles, that just gives me my number of particles, okay? Let's do some example calculations, all right? Calculate the mass of 500 atoms of iron. So first of all, let's just make sure that we kind of have a good expectation of what we're gonna get for this answer. Um, before I do any calculation, I like to think, you know, what kind of number am I gonna get? Am I gonna get a small number? Am I gonna get a big number? Am I gonna get like a medium sized number, right? So 500 atoms is not a lot. It's not a whole lot at all. I could count 500 atoms if I had a couple minutes and a electron microscope, okay? So I'm expecting a very tiny mass. All right, so just like we do in these dimensional analysis problems, start with the number you're given first. So I'm gonna start with 500 point, and I like to write 500 Fe to remind myself, and that, that to me is my you know, symbol for number of atoms. So I have 500 iron atoms. And point because one, two, three, sig figs. So now I'm converting this to mass. So remember, I'm gonna go down and then up and then down and then up, etc. Until I get to where I need to be, all right? So I'm gonna have um, iron, and this is the number of iron atoms here, all right, in one mole of iron. How many atoms are in one mole of iron? You got it right, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 irons are in one mole of iron. And now I need to get to the molar mass of iron. So what am I gonna use? Well, I know I gotta go down. I know that this needs to be mole of iron and this needs to be grams of iron, okay? So what I need to use is the periodic table, okay? So find your periodic table. Here's mine. I should have a digital version ready to go for you on the screen. But as I look at this, I can see the mass that's written here for iron, 55.845. Let's see. Can you see that? There's iron, 55.845, okay? So what do I do with that number? Well, remember, that periodic table mass is the same in the number of grams per mole. So 55.845 AMU, atomic mass units, equals 55.845 grams per mole, per one mole. So here, I just put the 55.845, I ran out of space there, and then now, look, my number of iron atoms is canceled, my mole of iron is canceled, and then now I'm left with grams of iron, and that's gonna give me my final answer, okay? And so let's go ahead and plug this into my handy digital scientific calculator here. So the way that I like to do this, and I know some of you have your, um, your graphing calculators, you have your calculators that allow you to put multiple steps in, this calculator only lets me put one step in at a time, um, but it still works just as fine, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say 500 times one times 55.845, and then I'm gonna say divided by 6.2 gems and 23 divided by one, all right? So let's do that. I'm gonna say 500 times one equals 500, maybe next time I don't need to do that step, times 55.845 equals, and now I'm gonna let it ride. I'm not gonna touch this calculator, I'm just gonna keep going, and I'm gonna say now divided by 
Avogadro's number, 6.022E23 equals, and that's the right answer, okay? It's four point, and then let's look at this, one, two, three sig figs, and my, um, this calculator is saying, you know, 4.636, so with three sig figs, it's gonna be 4.64, okay? times 10 to the minus 20 grams is the mass of 500 atoms of iron. And again, back to the beginning of this, I expected a small number because it's only 500 atoms and this is a pretty small number. So that seems reasonable, okay? Let's do another one of these examples. Diamond is a natural form of pure carbon. Hopefully you knew that. If not, now you do. What number of atoms of carbon are in a 5.45 carat diamond? And they tell me 1.00 carats is 0 0.200 grams. Okay. Some of you might be reading this problem and you might think, I have no idea where to start this because now I've got multiple numbers. Okay. Always start with the number you're given, usually first if there's multiple numbers. Okay. And don't start with definitions or unit conversions. So here, this is like a definition or a unit conversion. Don't start with this. Start with this, with the 5.45 carats. That's the first number we were given, okay? 5.45 carat. Okay, and now, in my same process, right? Down then up, down then up, down then up. First, we know that I'm gonna have to put carat down here so I cancel that unit. Next, I can see, oh, I've got this relationship here that says 1.00 carat equals 0 0.200 grams. Okay, fantastic. All right. So that allows me to cancel the carat and the carat. And now if I were to just do this calculation, I would see that a 5.45 carat diamond is uh, 5.45 times 0.2, that would give me the mass of that rock, okay, of that stone. Okay, but it asks me what number of carbon atoms, so I gotta keep it going. And on my next line, automatically, before I even really know confidently what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a G down there, because I know I have to make this G and this G cancel, all right? And then now if it's asking me for the number of carbon atoms, okay, I remember that I can go from number of atoms to grams by using Avogadro's number, okay? So the first thing that I have down here when I'm talking about what mass do I use, this is where I'm gonna use the mass of carbon because we're specifically talking about mass of carbon, what number of atoms present are in this thing, okay? So I know, and, and because this is not um, carbon 12, right? This is an average sample of carbon, okay? Any, any amount of sample we get of an element from the real world, okay? Scoop up some carbon from your backyard. Scoop up some carbon in your diamond ring, whatever, right? It's gonna contain not only the carbon 12, but it's also going to contain the carbon 13 and the carbon 14. So we have to use a periodic table mass. Periodic table mass of carbon is 12.011. Just use all the sig figs. Why not? Okay, you can do the estimation later because this is all multiplication and division anyways. So that's now 12.011 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. And now I'm trying to get some number of atoms so I know in one mole, there's 6.022 times 10, that's a 10, to the 23, okay? And that's gonna give me my number of carbon atoms. Uh, so this was mole of carbon, that's carbon atoms, so grams and grams of carbon cancel, mole and mole of carbon cancel, and I'm left with now just um, atoms. And let's enter this in. So I like to say, you know, multiply everything on the top, and I'm gonna say divide by everything on the bottom. So I'm gonna say 5.45 times 0.2 times one, I don't really need to do that, but I'll do it anyways, times 
6.022E23, and I just like to say equals at this point, okay? Don't touch that calculator. Don't mess with it, because now I have to say um, divided by 1.00. I'll put it in there just so you can see that I do it anyways, equals, and then I can say divide by 12.011. So divide by 12.011 equals, and then I'll even just say divide by one equals to show you that if these numbers that I had here and here were not one, I can still just keep saying divide by this equals, divide by this equals, I can keep it going. And then now, because this is all multiplication and division, I have one final answer that I can apply the sig fig rules. Uh, let's see, one, two, three sig figs. Um, that definition of caret has one, two, three, one, two, three. So three sig figs is what we've got. 5.46, and ooh, it's so close. It's so close, but I'm going to keep it as 4.6, okay? Because this 4.9 is just not quite enough. Okay. 5.46 times 10 to the 22 carbon atoms. Okay. So now look, this wasn't too bad, right? There was one, two, three, four, I guess really just one, two, three steps in this stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, dimensional analysis, all means the same thing. We're gonna keep adding, okay? I want you to get comfortable and good at this, to let it ride is what I call it. Just keep that problem going, okay? I think if, if you can let it ride and keep it going, you're going to be able to do um, some challenging problems much easier than you think. Let's keep it going.